looking north and south this summer. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plaw Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky tonight. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west, right? Well, for the most part. And the moon, planets, and stars rise in the east and set in the west, too. Uh huh. So, how do the stars move in the north and south? Oh, I see where this is going. We're going to do some spinning in this episode, aren't we? Yep. First, we're going to show you the stars and constellations you can find when you face north and south after dark. Then, we'll demonstrate how the sky seems to move over the course of a night in each direction. Hold on tight. Let's get spinning. Okay, we have our sky set to 10 p.m. facing north any night this week. What's the first thing you notice? The Big Dipper, of course. It's about halfway up in the northwestern sky. Four brighter stars make a cup, and three more make a curved handle. And since we're facing north, the North Star, or Polaris, should be here too. It's not terribly bright, but it should be as bright as the Big Dipper's stars. There it is, about halfway up in the sky. The North Star is part of the Little Dipper, but good luck trying to find that. Four of its seven stars are too faint to see in most cities. But finding the North Star is simple when you have the Big Dipper around. Simply connect the dots on the two spoon stars, continue that line over to the right, and then you'll run smack dab into the North Star. And if you continue that line, hop over to another recognizable group of stars. They look like the letter W. Yep, and this is the constellation Cassiopeia the Queen. I know it doesn't look much like a queen, but the W could be her crown. Mm, I can picture that. But the crown looks bent on one side. Ah, I'll show you why as we go for a spin. As the night moves on, the stars in the north move like this. Notice, they seem to rotate around a central point, the North Star. It's also called Polaris because it's our pole star, the star that just happens to be above our North Pole. Yeah, like 432 light years above our North Pole. But as the Earth spins, the stars seem to make a counterclockwise circle around this spot. As the night rolls on, the Big Dipper gets lower while Cassiopeia rises up higher. As daytime comes on, the stars are still there. We just can't see them with all the sunlight. But they continue to move around Polaris. And as we move toward afternoon, the Big Dipper is high in the sky and Cassiopeia, bonk, bonks her head on the ground. Ah, that's why the crown is bent. Exactly. Now let's face south. It's 10 p.m. and we have two great summer constellations just above the horizon. Scorpius is on the right and Sagittarius is on the left. You can recognize Scorpius by the bright red supergiant star called Antares. Antares can be really twinkly when it's low in the sky and thus stands in for the scorpion's beating heart. Chasing the scorpion is the constellation Sagittarius the Archer. He's a centaur, half man, half horse, with an arrow notched in his bow. In reality, the stars you can see look more like a teapot than a centaur. You should also see two other bright night lights around the centaur. Those are the planets Saturn, to the right, and Mars, to the left. Cool. And don't be surprised to see the moon passing through. It'll be near Saturn on the night of the 20th and over by Mars on the 22nd. So, in the south, look for Scorpius and Sagittarius with the planets Saturn and Mars hanging around the centaur. And in the north, look for the Big Dipper, Polaris, and Cassiopeia. Hey James, can we spin the Earth like really fast just for fun? And show days and nights fly by? Uh-huh. Okay, hold on. Ah! Keep looking, looking up. up.